Hello, my name is Mike Gag, uh, and in this video we will be looking at uh, uh, the basics of defining our own classes in C Sharp. Alright, I'm going to start here uh, with some uh, pretty much an empty pro project here. Uh, if you've been watching the video series so far that you'll know there's nothing uh, here that you don't already know. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, programming. Okay, so I want to start off this conversation about classes with a practical example. Now, I, I, I'm under the impression that you all will know a little bit about classes before watching this video. However, I'm going to put a little bit in here just kind of as a refresher um, in case, you know, you, it's been a while or maybe you didn't quite understand it. I don't want to go super in depth, but I am going to cover some stuff here. So we're going to look at a practical example of attracting or encapsulating data um, is a good idea. Okay. Um, so. I'm going to come up with just some completely arbitrary uh, uh, program here in which I'm going to need uh, someone's name and I'm going to need someone's favorite color. All right. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user for their name. like this uh, and then I'm going to read their name in it's console.read line in case you didn't know all right and then I'm just gonna keep on going oops what I do here oh, misspelled that okay and then I'm gonna say console.write line all right and please enter your favorite color and favorite color equals console dot read line. All right. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Uh, and just for the heck of it now, I will do console dot right line. Uh, your name is um, I could. Well, we can format this a different way, but I'm I'm not gonna. Okay. Um, You can put symbols inside the string to count for variables, like a formatted string, and you really should. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, this is just the way I prefer it. I'm weird like that. I like to put the variables directly in there. I know it takes up more space, and it's not as uh, flexible and whatnot. It's I'm just, I don't know, I'm weird like that. That's This is what I do. Um, if you're curious about formatting strings in C Sharp, uh, you can either look it up, or maybe I'll throw it in a I'll video in the future here. Um, okay, so... We're just gonna let's just run our program here. Uh, and it's gonna say enter your name. My name is Mike. My favorite color is green. All right, your name is Mike, and your favorite color is green. Fantastic. All right, so our program works. All right, it does what we want. It reads in a first name, it reads in a favorite color, uh, and it outputs it to the screen. Right. So far, really nothing that complicated. Now let's let's sort of take this particular program to an extreme. All right, let's say uh, instead of um, Instead of just needing one name and one favorite color, let's say we need um, a thousand, a thousand people. Well, in this instance, what that means is that I have to manage 2,000 variables. Okay, uh, I need a thousand first names and a thousand favorite colors. Um, we can take that even further and say, hey, what if we didn't need first name, favorite color? Uh, what if we also need last name, age, address, phone? Right, uh, so that's 5,000 variables now, uh, and we'd name them something like first name one, first name two, or we'd put them in five arrays of a thousand. Right, um, and things get a bit cumbersome at that point. We have to be sure that we don't accidentally uh, use uh, name 499 with favorite color 501, right? Because that's a different person. Uh, so things get mismatched. Not to mention that all of the, the code that, that works on these uh, variables uh, will be all over the place, right? We'll just have variables and, and work that, that modifies these variables just scattered all about, right? It'll be a, a, just a giant mess, okay? Um, so instead, what we can do is we can encapsulate that, all right? We can encapsulate the variables, and we can encapsulate the, the functionality of the data, all right, into one piece. So at the end of the day, if we need a thousand people, we can manage one thousand variables, one for each person. 
all right? And that one variable will be a complex variable containing all the other variables inside, all right? Uh, the way I liken it when I, when I teach face-to-face uh, -face with students is I, I liken it to a suitcase, right? Now, if you're traveling, uh, you can just, you know, hold in your hands all of your clothes and toothpaste and shampoo and, and all, you can just hold all of that in your hands while, while going through the airport or, or driving or whatever, but that, that would be ridiculous. That would be incredibly difficult to not drop anything, not mess something up, right? Uh, so instead, what do you do? You get a suitcase, right? Or a bag or something, and you put all of these various items, right? And you encapsulate them into a suitcase. And then you walk around with just a suitcase. Sure, you still have to have a suitcase, but all of the items are nice and neat, safely stored inside. And if you needed to give the suitcase to, say, someone else, instead of handing them piles of clothing and stuff like that, you just hand them a suitcase, and everything is inside of it. All right. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do here. So we're going to encapsulate uh, by, by writing our own class. And you'll actually see here, um, <clears throat> we have a class right now. It's called Class Program. That's, that's the main entry point for our program. So we're already kind of using that. However, our classes aren't going to have main and stuff like that. They're going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and add a class. All right. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to my variable example in my Solution Explorer. All right, this variable example is just the name of my project. I'm still using the one I created uh, a while ago. And I'm going to right click that and I'm going to do add. I'm going to go to new item. And the very first thing I see here is class. All right, and I'm going to call my class. We're just going to say person. Awesome. And look at this, this is great. Uh, a couple things are already done for us that are fantastic. First, uh, some required things are already brought in. Okay. Uh, secondly, we're already given the appropriate namespace. You can see here, namespace variable example, namespace variable example. So that's great. And they've already defined our class for us. All right, to define a class, it's the class keyword, okay? Uh, and then the name of the class, so person. Awesome. All right, so this works, you know, whatever, but our class is empty, all right? It doesn't hold anything. It's, it, it's like an empty suitcase. It's, it's not all that useful. All right, we have to put stuff in it, all right? Um, so we can talk about doing that. Now, a little bit of terminology for you here, all right? Uh, a variable that's inside of a class is known as a member, okay? Uh, it's still a variable, right? It still behaves like a variable in every way, but we call it a member, the class member, okay? Uh, a function that's a part of a class, we call a method, okay? Or a member function. Okay, uh, so just keep that in mind, it's just a little terminology. I say function and method interchangeably. Uh, method means it's part of a class, function means it's not, but you know, it, it's, it's pretty much the exact same thing, only when it's part of a class, you should call it a method, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to define uh, a couple members, okay? So first off, I'm gonna say public. We'll talk about this here in a second. Public string, first name, oops and public string, uh, not last name, I'm sorry, favorite color, okay. Um, and we'll define, um, uh, let's see here, we'll just say, um, we'll define a, a member, we'll say public string uh, output person, in in output person, in an output person, we are going to return. Uh, we are going to say, you know, well, we'll say I. My, my name is first name, and my favorite color is. And this is completely arbitrary. What I'm saying, you can substitute your own text there. Um, oops like that. There we go. All right. We could also, okay, so here we can also uh, format the string like this, and I really should just do this. Okay. Um, okay, so what we could say um, is we could say format. Oops. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just 
string dot format. Yeah, that's the right one. Um, and we can format our own string by saying, uh, my name is, and my favorite color is, and then just say first name, favorite color. All right. Um, that's another thing we can do. Then you can see like the string is all nice and neat here. I, I almost never do this. I always manually place them in there, but you know, um, we can also, if we were doing say like a console dot right line, we wouldn't need to do string about format console dot right line. We'll take this and be just fine. Um, so, okay. So that works great. All right. So let's go ahead and just build this, make sure everything builds. Uh, awesome. Uh, we see here we got a couple of just weird errors. It's never assigned to and will always have its default value of null. Um, that's not necessarily true because we made them public um, and we can go ahead and begin using them. Now, uh, well, let's just use this and then we'll, we'll talk more about public. Okay, so we've got the string first name, string favorite color. So let's go ahead and change this now. Uh, what we want to do instead is instead of tracking a first name and a favorite color where they have really nothing to do with each other, we are going to create a person person my person equals new person just like that okay and then I'm just gonna say my person dot and you see here that all these things pop up uh, dot first name and my person dot favorite color and console dot right line my person dot output person all right so what we've seen here is we've used two members and a method of this person class. All right. Uh, so we've got person, my person. This is this class we wrote. Um, and note here, we're not just doing like uh, person, my person, like we would do int x. OK, um, if you remember correctly, uh, back when we talked about the variables, uh, we have these things called value variables and reference variables. Value variables are like int x. Uh, equals 5. X is a primitive, it's a value variable. It contains the value 5. Now, our, our custom classes or abstract data types or whatever you want to call them, right, the, the classes that we write, um, those are reference uh, variables, which means they don't contain the values themselves. This new keyword builds a person like a factory would, builds it and puts it somewhere and then gives us the memory address. And that's what's in here is the memory address to that variable. All right. If you think about it like uh, like you're, you're having a house built, OK, a contractor doesn't build a house and then hand you a house. OK, it's too big for that. No one can hand you a house. All right. So what does the contractor do? The contractor goes to some plot of land and he builds the house. Then he comes back to you and gives you the address and then you go to the house. OK. Um, that's kind of what's happening here. So we are building our reference variable, my person, which is of type person. Uh, you could say we are instantiating it. Okay, that's the keyword instantiation. Um, and then we're just using it. So we have this my person. My person contains a first name and a favorite color, and it has some functionality. Okay, uh, so we're saying, hey, what's your first name? And then I'm saying my person dot first name. That's to access this first name. All right, equals console dot All right, uh, and so let's go ahead and uh, what I want to do is I want to put a breakpoint in here. Well, first off, let's watch it run and then we'll then we'll break it down and see what's happening. So I'm gonna run it. Please enter your name, Mike. Enter your favorite color, green. My name is Mike. And my favorite color is green. Awesome. Now I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here. Just put a little red dot on the side by clicking, and I'm gonna run it again. This time I'm just gonna hit F5 and not Control F5. Enter your name, Mike. Favorite color. Green. Okay, so my program's going to stop because I have a breakpoint here. Uh, and what I want to do is I'm going to mouse over my person, and we can look by clicking here. My person has two variables inside, first name and favorite color, and we see Mike and Green. So these variables are all nice and wrapped up in this variable for us. All right. Perfect. Great. And if I needed to create um, a thousand people, right, I could do just person, you know, uh, people array or whatever, you know, um, I'm not going to type it all out. Um, okay. So uh, let me come back here. Just 
to get rid of those errors. Okay, um, so there, we've successfully encapsulated both the functionality of formatting uh, that, uh, that output and the variables themselves, all right? Because why not make this class responsible for how it's gonna format its output, right? It, it is its own class, you know, so it probably should. Okay, so, all right, so, so far I've covered uh, basically how to create a class, how to uh, uh, encapsulate some data and some functionality and stuff like that. We've talked about the instantiation keywords, stuff like that. Um, one more thing I want to talk about. Um, oh, by the way, we also talked about uh, accessing public members with the my person dot. That's the dot operator. It's how you access parts of the class. Like if I wasn't sure what this class could do, I could just do my person dot, and you see everything this class can do. I can check equals, I can see what its favorite color is, its first name, I can get its hash code, its type, I can output its person, and I can do to string. All right, uh, everything that we didn't write, so we wrote output person, first name, and color. Everything else just automatically uh, comes with the object because uh, they all inherit it, you know, just by default. Okay, so let's talk about security real quick here. All right. So uh, what we've done is we have created our first name and our favorite color, and we've made them public, all right? Um, generally speaking, that, that's a really bad idea, okay? Um, it's, it's very poor security. And what I mean by that is that uh, by making this public, all right, anyone can change it, okay? And they can make it anything, all right? And that might seem like a really good thing, uh, and in this program, it wouldn't really matter. But let's think about like bank software, or um, you know, some financial institution, or uh, the government, or hospitals, right? Where data is very, very important. You know, it often can be life or death. We don't want people just to be able to mess with stuff. All right. Um, in this program, if someone sets the favorite color to the word tree, because that can happen. It's just a string, right? It's no big deal. Right? But in some other situation, that could be a really big deal. It could cause your whole program to crash, and it could be a really big problem. So we don't generally want to make our variables open to everybody. Instead, we want to make them not public, but something called private. All right. Now, when a variable is private, when a, or when a member variable is private, um, you can't access it. Nothing can access it uh, besides the internal workings of this class, all right? Uh, what that means is if I come back over here to program, now all of a sudden this isn't going to work. You see these red lines? It says first name is inaccessible due to its protection level. We can't just write to it, okay? Uh, it is a private variable, okay? Uh, the way I like to say it is, you know, my nose is private. I can pick it, but you cannot, okay? It's private to me. All right, so the inside of this person class can do whatever it wants to these variables. All right, but outside of the class, when you just have an object of the class, we can't directly access it. All right, and that's where we get into things uh, like properties uh, that become very, very important. All right, so that's going to conclude everything for this video. Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk more about uh, member security, and we are going to talk about something called properties.